You ever have one of those days when you try and plan things but they don't go according to plan? <laughs> and I had one of those today. I was planning to talk on Matthew chapter 22. In fact, that was the, the reading for yesterday as we were doing the Navigator's reading. As I was preparing for that this afternoon, I came across a song that I wanted to share with you today. I know I did that yesterday, but I wanted to do it again today. I felt it, it beneficial uh, given our present circumstances. The title of the song is called Ancient of Days. Uh, it's by uh, the group I mentioned yesterday, City of Light, and I've come to, as I've been listening to their music, come to appreciate how uh, scripturally based their music is. And this particular song, is an, the title is not the one that I remember when I was growing up. In fact, there's a similar song, uh, but this is not that one. That term, Ancient of Days, is actually only found just a few places in Scripture. In fact, one of those we find in Daniel chapter 7. Uh, verses 9 to 10, I want to read that for you just to give some context to where we see it. It says, While I was watching, thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. Daniel 7, verse 9. His attire was white like snow, and the hair on his head was like lamb's wool. His throne was ablaze with fire, and its wheels were all aflame. A river of fire was streaming forth and proceeding from his presence. Many thousands were ministering to him. Many tens of thousands stood ready to serve him. The courts convened, and the books were open. And then it talks in verses 13 about the, the Son of Man, whom we know to be Jesus himself, going up to the Ancient of Days, God the Father. Now the term Ancient of Days pushes us to look back to Genesis. In the beginning, God created. In other words, God was before time. He's before any of this ever happened. He existed from eternity past. Uh, we often say he's from eternity to eternity. He has no beginning. He has no end. He has forever existed. And with that, he is the one who had the power, uh, the wisdom, and the might uh, to set up this world. I read a quote some time ago, um, I don't remember where it was or by whom, but commented that the plan, or the, or the things that we are seeing now is God's best plan. And we often ask why and how could that be? Well, that's because we think of it on our end. We think of it as something that gives us the most comfort, gives us our every satisfaction, gives us our every desire, but those are fleshly things and those are things that we're desiring from a sinful perspective. But ultimately, everything that's happening in the order that it is, is being worked out for God's greatest glory. And of all the myriads of plans, remember, he's the one with ultimate wisdom. Out of all the, the thousands and thousands of plans possible, this is the best one that would bring him the greatest glory. And I know there's a lot of varying emotions right now with anger at some individuals, politicians, uh, world leaders, uh, well-known people. And on the other end, there's complete fear and anxiety of what waits ahead of us uh, with the economy, with the virus itself, with any number of other things, <laughs> the, the hornets or the wasps that came out here that we're, we're reading about now that's plastered all over Facebook. And with all those mixes of things, uh, we see some distractions, don't we? My purpose in all of this is to be, to be looking and watching as to what God's doing. He's using this time for a purpose. I think he's drawing the church closer to himself. I think he's spreading the gospel uh, in ways that have never been done before. I think it's, uh, it's opened doors for the persecuted church in some respect, as, as they have been the ones that have been uh, administering humanitarian aid in many places that, uh, that uh, the government and, and others wouldn't even begin to touch. They were the ones there risking their lives. We've seen that in our own country as well. What's God doing? What is the Ancient of Days, the one sitting on the throne, doing right now? And that term in and of itself was comforting me uh, today. 
you know, amidst everything that's going on, and, and I honestly I have some questions about, you know, everything that's going on, but I don't know what to think. But I do know this. God is in control. And everything is going according to his plan. And so my job is to watch, to look, and to see what he's doing. And how ultimately I can use this time, I can redeem this time for the gospel of Christ. So take some time to listen to the song after this clip. It reminds us of some amazing truths. Yet what? The king is reigning over all. This truth remains. It says, none above him, none before him. All of time is in his hands. His throne, it shall remain and ever stand. And towards the end, I watch and wait for the Savior King. And that's what we do. We look, we watch, we anticipate as to what God's doing in this world to bring himself the greatest glory through this unique time. Hope you're encouraged with this song as I was uh, today. Uh, tomorrow we'll get to Matthew 22. Um, remember, ancient of days, think upon him today, the one who holds everything in his hand. God bless. <laughs>